On February 20th, 2022, Indiana Chapman became the Canadian lead champion at the Richmond Olympic Oval in Vancouver. Indiana has had a decorated youth career in Canada. She's won continental events and she's earned a ticket to the finals of three youth world championships events. Uh, and we finally get a chance to talk to her here uh, for uh, for a quick interview. Thanks very much, Indiana. It's it's really nice to, to talk to you uh, digitally. I'll go, I guess we've said hello mm -hmm. in the past. At gyms yeah. Or whatever. But, yeah, uh, I'm happy to be here. Cool. Yeah. Uh, well, let's start out the the way I wanted to talk because the comp was now kind of over a week ago. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't quite feel like a sideline interview at this point. So <laughs> there were three moments from the finals day that I wanted to ask you about about how you were feeling. Yeah. Um, and uh, and what was going through your head. So moment number one is. Before your final climb, you're about to go out. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm guessing at this point you're aware that nobody had topped the route. And yeah. I'm wondering if based on preview, how you felt about uh, how your climb might go, how confident you were, how are you feeling mm -hmm. as you're about to step out for that final climb? Yeah, well, definitely leading up to the competition, I felt like I had trained really well and I was very prepared. So I think because of that, throughout the comp on every round and every route I was definitely my goal was to top and I believed I could um so yeah after seeing the finals route it looked really fun and I was really excited um so yeah just in isolation I did a lot of vis visualization and I was definitely my goal was to top the route for sure based on on what you were hearing um mm -hmm. from other yeah the applause and all that kind of stuff um if your goal was always to top, but did did you did your expectations change based on the noises that were coming from the crowd when you when you heard, you know, yeah. Becca's reaction and Alana's reaction mm -hmm. and all that stuff? How how did that make you feel? Yeah, honestly, I was in like I was in the zone in isolation. Okay. I wasn't focused on the crowd at all. Like I knew no one had topped based on the crowd's response, but I I really wasn't paying attention um, to how they were doing. Cool. All right, yeah. moment number two is mm -hmm. your left hand sticks, hold 47. <laughs> you got your fingers in there, you pop off, yeah. you're lowering, your feet finally hit the ground. What mm -hmm. What are you thinking at that moment? Yeah, that was a tough moment afterwards. I, I definitely felt like in that position, I had two choices. I could try to move my feet, which would set me up for the next move, um, but it definitely felt harder than just going for the move. So in that moment, I was like, okay, just go for it. You should probably get the plus. Um, and that hold was definitely worse than I was expecting. So yeah, it was it was a bit disappointing to fall there and you know not get the send, but um, I knew I'd probably done enough to get the Canadian win at least. Yeah. All right. So then the third and final moment is standing on the podium, mm -hmm. first place for Canada, second mm -hmm. place for the event. Yeah. Uh, how how did that all feel was it was it the best thing you could have dreamed of was there still a little bit of sourness from from that that hold yeah or what? It, it was a, it was bittersweet for sure it was really exciting to get um the canadian win which had been a goal of mine for a while so that was really cool but i think i was also a little disappointed that i didn't get the send on the route but yeah overall i was really happy and proud with how i climbed the whole weekend Cool. Well, we'll we'll circle back and tie into some some other elements like uh, like Chloe being there, uh, yeah. and uh, and your climbing in general. But the first thing, j just to get it out of the way, is you know you've been a successful youth competitor, blah blah blah. We can just talk about that forever, but we're not going to. That's that's in the past. Uh, but at sure. this point, do you do you think of yourself as more of a, a lead climber or a boulderer, just within your own mm -hmm. head? Yeah, that that's something that's definitely changed for me in the past couple of years. I always thought of myself as like, you know, good at both, especially in the youth, because I was consistent in both, I think. Um, but a couple years, I had a pretty bad knee injury, which I found affected my bouldering a lot more than it did my lead. Um, so since then, I felt like more of a lead climber for sure. And it's been a process getting my confidence back up in bouldering. Yeah. Can you talk a bit about that that injury? Because you, mm. it was kind of the perfect storm for yourself. You basically yeah. become eligible for adult competition. Mm -hmm. You get this injury. A pandemic comes around. Um, yeah. But we'll focus on the the injury part. Uh, can you just talk about what happened? And then also, it seems like your recovery has gone actually fairly well. Like you managed it really yeah, well. But you still sure. don't feel 100%. Is that my understanding? 
Yeah, so I heard it. I tore my LCL on my knee, um, completely tore it, doing a heel hook, like a, a pretty aggressive heel hook just in training. Um, and, yeah, that put me out for the bouldering season of that year. Um, so that was definitely really hard at first to deal with. Um, you know, just like also because my climbing style, it, I use my feet a lot and heel hooks are my favorite move. So I guess since recovering from that injury, heel hooks have definitely been, I've, I'm more careful with them now. Um, so yeah, I think more than anything, it's, I have a more of a mental block for those kind of moves. Now I'm just a little more hesitant towards them. Um, but I think the injury also allowed me to work on a lot of areas where I wasn't um, as good. So just so you know, like things like my upper body strength and power, I definitely worked on those a lot during the injury and improved a lot at them. So I think definitely more good things came out of it in the end, which was nice. Cool. Um, you're, I'm going to skip towards the end for, for a, a related mm -hmm. question is that's just actually to ask about your dad, just because so much of mm -hmm. your recovery was kind of in, in line with, uh, the lockdowns. I imagine you spent a yeah. lot of time with your family, for sure. up like all of us did. <laughs> um, now I remember, uh, I think your dad started you climbing, but you competed mm -hmm. on a youth team, like kind of everybody does. You had youth yeah, coaches exactly. from that gym and then eventually you stepped away from that and it seemed like your dad filled a bit of uh, a bit of that void and I wanted to ask mm -hmm. um, kind of how your relationship with your dad uh, has evolved in climbing and like what does he bring to the table for you at this point mm -hmm. yeah so as you said I was on a youth team for like the first five years of my climbing working with like the youth team coach at that gym um, but kind of alongside of that he'd always been there like he'd always he'd got me into climbing um, and we'd go to the gym and climb together just for fun. Um, so yeah, when he took over my coaching, it, it felt like a really natural fit. Um, yeah, we've always got along really well. Like we have a, we're very close. We have a good relationship and yeah. So when he started coaching me, it felt really natural, you know, like we understand each other well, so he knows when to push me, how hard to push me. Um, but also when to, you know, take the coaching hat off and just be the dad at home. Um, but yeah, we, we work really well together. So I think it was just a natural fit. Do you, uh, let me ask you a different way then, because he also coaches some other climbers uh, in mm -hmm. person and then also like by correspondence. Uh, yeah. What do you think he brings to those athletes who you know they're they're mm -hmm. not his daughter uh yeah. what uh what do you what do you think his his strong suits are for climbers like that yeah well his coaching style is um it i think he breaks up the physical aspect equally with the mental aspect of climbing um so that's something that i like if he wasn't my dad i'd still want him to be my coach i think because of that so he doesn't only look at you know, the training and climbing part, um, which is super important, but I think looking at the mental aspect to climbing and competitions is like, is just very important. So he does a good job about um, working on that area with his athletes. Cool. All right, let's get back into the order thing. So back to, mm -hmm. back to your climbing. Um, you've been competing like just long enough in the open circuit for me to like be comfortable asking a question that's mm -hmm. difficult like this. And that's, kind of a, a really vague question but no it's not vague it's just it's just hard yeah. um if uh, let's take the women's field in either discipline if all mm -hmm. of you are at your best day where do you feel like you fit in among the alanas and mm -hmm. now the evangelinas and the beccas and the bronwins and 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 all that yeah yeah well i think for bouldering um if we're just looking at that first um we're all super close which i think is really cool to see you know like at those big events like nationals if we're all having our best day it could come down to anyone you know just based on probably based on the boulders or yeah based on how we're climbing that day um and i think it's cool to have like that uh tough competition it definitely pushes us all to be the best we can um, and I guess for the lead portion, 
yeah, like all of us climbing our best. Again, it's pretty close. Um, but I definitely think I'm better at lead than I am at bouldering. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so you're even you're even in bouldering, but you think you're better at lead. So you've got to rate yourself pretty highly, especially after winning nationals, right? Yeah, a little better than lead. <laughs> okay, cool. Now, what about on the international uh, field? Like you, you've. Hmm. Um, uh, aside from the continental stuff, like at, at Youth Worlds, you've you've made those mm -hmm. finals in both lead and bouldering. Uh, yeah. it, it wasn't enough to earn a medal, although finals for a Canadian is like really extraordinary. <laughs> and then is. separately, you've you've now had some World Cup experience as well. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what do you think you were missing in those Youth World Championships, and and what do you think you're going to need to take it to the next step in the World Cups? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had some pretty good success in my youth world uh, events. Um, and also, to my surprise, I usually did better in bouldering than lead, um, which was kind of funny. You got, and I think, was it two fourths in bouldering yeah, and then the seventh fourths. in lead? Yeah, okay, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I think that probably came down just to expectation. You know, I probably set a little more expectation for myself in the lead which might have added pressure, um, whereas bouldering, I was really just there to do my best and have fun. Um, but yeah, I think like every international event I go to, I just learn so much. Um, I think in Canada, we don't have as much exposure to that level yet. Um, so that's kind of how I felt going to each event, just, you know, learning more and more about that level, the setting, um, that kind of atmosphere um yeah so just those events honestly i was just trying to learn as much as i can i didn't really have many expectations for myself um but definitely in this last year like after i've done a couple lead adult world cups um i definitely got a better sense for the level and uh yeah i've just i guess taken that into my training and knowing how much harder I need to train and work and areas I need to improve uh, to get to that next level. What in particular do you feel like you need to, to work on for that next level? Um, there's so many things, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, uh, I've, for me, like the physical aspect, I've had to get a lot stronger um, physically for just, yeah, being able to send the boulders at that level. Um, and then also just the mental aspect is super important because I, uh, yeah, at my first two lead world cups, I was super nervous, um, kind of starstruck by everyone who was there and that definitely affected me. So yeah, just this year doing more world cups, I've worked a lot on my mental game. Um, and just like keeping that composure at that high level event. Cool. You mentioned expectations and uh, that this might be a dud question, but I wanted to know if there's any expectations that come with being such a successful youth competitor. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I get so nervous about young successful climbers because you see, you know, a, a lot of climbers just burn out straight up. There's just too yeah. much attention, too much success. It's not what they love. Um, mm -hmm. Do you feel like you have any extra weight on yourself from that youth uh, career? Yeah, um, I think at first, you know, that first year in open, I definitely, I was used to in the youth doing so well and my goals were really results focused, you know, in the youth, I, I went to comps to win and I think that was okay. But, you know, um, going into the open field, I had to shift my goals off of results and onto, you know, performance um, and just doing the best I could. Um, so yeah, that first year was definitely hard. Um, you know, I was used to winning a lot to not winning. Um, but I think it's made me a much better athlete in the long term. Hmm. Um, yeah, just like my, sorry, is there, um, I can hear it, but I can still hear yeah. you way better. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, it's just construction. It's all good. Um, yeah. So I think in the end it made me a better athlete um because i've had to focus less on results and more on training more on performance um yeah so i, I definitely don't feel as much pressure anymore than that first year um yeah i guess my goals have just changed as well okay 
Uh, also kind of talking about pressure, I wanted to ask about uh, your social media following. Um, it's just on my mind because I was talking to Madison Fisher about it. And I think mm-hmm. uh, she has she's had a really interesting experience where she just said, you know, the social media thing isn't worth it for me. There's too much of like a keeping up with the Joneses, yeah. Joneses aspect that didn't mm-hmm. fit with her. Um, you seem to have a good routine. Um, and uh by the fact that you're still doing it, I imagine it's pretty healthy for you, but how does that work mm-hmm. out for you? Like, is it just part of your day-to-day thing? Uh, and how do you manage yeah. seeing all these climbers everywhere doing their thing and uh, and maybe mm-hmm. pushing you a bit? Yeah, it's, it's definitely, there's positive aspects to it, which is why I have it. And then there are ne- negative aspects. So I think I've really used it. Um, for building that community, like, you know, it's so cool to be able to um, build relationships with climbers all over the world through Instagram. Um, And also for sponsors, it's been a really helpful tool. Um, And also just being able to share my journey with um, other climbers, I think is really special. But like everyone, I've been affected, like my mental health has definitely been affected with it, you know, Um, just like, it's it's hard not to compare yourself on Instagram when you're seeing all those other climbers and seeing how they're training. Um, so I've definitely had to set up boundaries for myself. You know, like when I'm not messaging friends or posting, I'm usually not on it just to give my mental health a break. Um, yeah, so I, it's it, I've definitely struggled with finding that good balance. Um, but yeah, I think just trying to stay off of it as much as I can has been good for me. Cool. Good for you. All right. In, uh, in the late fall and like early winter, I guess you went down to Salt Lake city and, uh, mm-hmm. it looked like you were doing a little bit of climbing at the, at the training center down there. Yeah. Uh, tell me about that trip. Like, why did you go? Uh, who, yeah. who were you going to, uh, to climb with? Tell me what was up. Yeah, that was a bit of a spontaneous trip for me. Honestly, I, I saw a break um, between competitions in Canada. So it was kind of like, I've always wanted to go there and train just because the climbing there and the athletes there are pretty amazing. Um, so yeah, I just went on that trip and I stayed with Victor and Oscar and I trained with Natalia Grossman, which was really cool for me. And yeah, I think my goal for that trip was honestly just to, again, get that exposure to that next level. Um, and like see how the top athletes are training and honestly just learn as much as I could. Um, And yeah, so it was really cool to be able to climb alongside the best climbers in the world and just see what they were doing and learn a lot. Um, Yeah, so that's- Were there any particular takeaways where you're like, oh, that is awesome or, Mm -hmm. you know, I didn't know this about that or something? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there were, I guess, a lot of things. Climbing with Natalia was really cool because, you know, you. I think we all think there's this big secret um, to how the best in the world are training. Um, but I think it was also just like eye opening to see that, you know, they just work really hard. Um, and, you know, uh, it's but they are just like normal people who love going to the gym, um, love climbing. Um, yeah so it was it was just cool to see them as like just any other person any other climber um yeah and i think i that was my biggest takeaway you know uh just i guess seeing that cool all right let's close it up with uh with the hard the the like question where you gotta like (laughs) lay it all on the table uh future goals so you gotta you gotta be straight up with with uh, the expectations you're you're setting on yourself. So the first question mm-hmm. is always like, is Paris 2024 a goal of yours at this point? Yeah, I think it's mostly a goal from other people that they've put on me. You know, like I think that's an expectation from people. But honestly, like I feel like I've barely I've only done two World Cups before, um, and my primary goals are just to get a lot of World Cup experience this year, um, hopefully do well in them and just learn a lot. So, you know, Paris 2024, it might become a goal and obviously it'd be really cool, but it's it's definitely not my focus, you know? Okay. 
Yeah, when yeah. you uh, when you talk about like uh, hitting up more World Cups, is there uh, like it, it sounds like maybe you want to hit more of the lead stuff, and and do you have any uh, yeah. performance based goals now that you're kind of back to training in the injuries, not as much of a, a big part? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I plan to do all the World Cups I can, bouldering as well, bouldering okay. and lead. Um, I've never done a bouldering World Cup, so obviously I don't know what to expect, but. Um, I've been training really hard this year and I've grown a lot in my abilities um, from, you know, a couple of years ago. So I think making semifinals is definitely a goal this year, which I know I can do. It's just a matter of when. Um, so, yeah, and, you know, just climbing the best I can at these events, not letting the nerves and the pressure get to me, I think is a big goal as well. Cool. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I hope uh, mm -hmm. I hope you get to go to all the World Cups you're hoping for this season. And yeah. uh, if I can, I don't know, I've been wanting to go to World Cups for the last like three years and it keeps <laughs> getting ruined by other stuff. So maybe we'll cross paths at one. Yeah, but, uh, hopefully. Yeah, but otherwise, I wish you the best season uh, you can uh, you. hopefully have. And thanks very much for spending the time. Uh, you can always follow mm -hmm. Indiana uh, on Instagram. Tags right there in the video. If you want to see more interviews like this, uh, you can subscribe uh, to this channel, like the video. Join us in the Discord to talk about World Cups. Uh, hit the Patreon, all that stuff. Thank you very much mm -hmm. for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.